Airman First Class Jacob Yao, I'm part of LLF Loop Crew 1, I'm a three man. Uh, we're going to go through lens inspection. Put things first, we're going to take the cover off, we'll check the data plate, make sure it's the right munition. It says data 158A. There's a bunch of stuff that we check whenever we do MUNS inspection. Um, take some of the covers off, uh, ADP and seeker window underneath here. And then we'll check the lugs, make sure they're good to go, make sure there's no FOD inside of here. Check the connectors right there. Uh, we'll also check underneath the straps, make sure there's no uh, dirt or grime. We'll also check the, the back side here. Check the nose port, uh, skin to skin contact on the fin, uh, wings. Expendable wedges. Basically look over the whole munition and make sure it's good to go. it to the 8x. So the 8x is our uh, multi-purpose rotary launcher. Um, it's to carry eight of these JASMs or any kind of 2,000 pound munition. So. so we'll put that on there that way we can connect our 1760 cable. After that we'll put our friction pad on. This is just to make sure that the the missile stays uh, doesn't get scratched or anything from the racks while we're putting it up. After that, it's ready to go and we'll move on to the next munition. Next step, the, our four-man jammer driver will uh, get underneath the munition and we'll load it up. Hello, I'm Senior Airman Hunter Rosen. I'm part of LLF Ro Load Crew 1. Um, I'm currently the two-man of the crew and I'm going to walk you through rack prep. So right here is what we call the Brew 56 30-inch bomb rack. Just making sure this way feet are flat. Um, I'll check. Sensing switch, make sure that this is not frayed, cracked, or and clear debris. <clears throat> this right here is the 1760 Frigus cable. I'm just checking if there's no bent pins, uh, any damage that I can see. Right now it's clear, it looks good to me. We'll throw that on top. And we'll make sure that these top hats right here, no movement, looks good. Um, we'll also make sure this is safety wired to high, it's the thrust control valves. Um, this side also has it as well. These are what we call our chopsticks. Just make sure we can cycle the rack, we'll do it three times. T, we're looking for T right here, make sure it all lines up, that's how we know it fully cycled. 
we'll do T again. We'll cycle it one more time. Make sure it goes T, we'll attempt to open. Not opening. And the final step would be make sure it's open and then we'll just give a little push on the hooks. And make sure that's fully open and then we'll proceed to cart these later in the load. Hey, I'm A1C Andrew Hill. Uh, I'm the foreman on LLF Load Crew 1. Uh, I'll go over my duties. First off, I do cart inspections for our two man when he's putting the carts in. I go over discrepancies on those. Secondly is I run the jammer. Uh, here we got the MHU 83 model DE. This is a 7,000 pound capacity jammer with the fork assembly on, which we'll be using today for the munitions. That cuts it down to 6,000 pounds capacity. <clears throat> uh, the jammer's got three control stations. One at the driver, which has your boom stations as, long as, as well as your outriggers. Up here towards the front, you have your RCU, operated by your one man. This is for minor adjustments when I get the munition close. He also has his table adjustments here on the boom. This is the strap we use to lock down the munition when we get it loaded on the forks. And we'll take you through the startup procedure. You have your ignition switch and you have your start and your preheat. This controls your RPMs, this is your throttle right here, as well as your parking brake. Ears on. Startup procedure, first, Put our RPMs at about halfway. Ignition switch to on. Boom level up and start. I'm Staff Sergeant Anthony Bergstrom, part of the 28th Mons LLF crew number one. Um, we have our LLF right here and I'm gonna be going through our general procedures of loading before we actually start our load. So we walk through, first thing that we're gonna do, I'll have the rest of my crew do all of their prep, which includes looking at the actual munition, checking over the jammer, and doing rack prep. Um, the entire time I actually have my technical data, which is our checklist of everything that we need to do, and I read through and I make sure that everything is going according to plan, I'm on the proper step, and then I'm making sure that my guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Once I have all of my stuff ready, they will pick up the munition, they bring it over, they'll bring it in underneath the rack. The main thing that I'm gonna be looking for when this happens is I will be guiding and we will be making sure that we get lined up properly with the rack to make sure that the munition can actually go up and go in. So one of the big things to look at is we have our hooks here, which actually are the part of the rack that actually hold the munition. So you have to make sure that you line up, you come in, and you go up when you're doing this. Um, one of the big things to account for when you are loading in this particular style using a jammer with just forks is the jammer has a parabolic arc. So as we're coming up, the jammer will actually move in an up and a down fashion on the side at the same time. Um, part of that that becomes an issue is while we're moving ammunition, we have to have a strap on it to make sure that it can't fall off during our load. Big problem is once we get closer, the strap needs to come off so that we can actually have freedom of movement so that we can adjust to what we need to and we can't, we have clearance to actually make sure the strap comes off. So we can't lock it in with the strap on. So one of the big problems is we have to be able to eye. Uh, part of it that comes with experience is you have to be able to eye what you're gonna be going to and then you take the strap off and you go from there and you use the movements you have available to get into the actual rack. Um, from that part, it comes down to experience a lot of the times. Um, if you don't have it lined up, sometimes you'll have to come back down, re-strap, move the jammer again, and then unstrap and go back up. So that's essentially all that we're gonna be looking for. Uh, the rack prep Rosen already went over. That he, when, when it locks in, he's looking for T here. For myself, after it gets locked in, we do um, a weight check. So for the weight check is we are going to separate the munition from the casket the giant silver bottom part. We're gonna separate those so the munition will be free hanging on the rack. From there, he's go we are going to lower it, make separation. He's going to do an attempt to open where he takes one of his tools and he will do, he will check it to make sure that the rack doesn't open on its own. 
from there, it will get locked. I have a lock indicator here that is just a double verification to make sure that we are actually locked. Once, this, once we check this is good, we are clear to move the jammer out, move it away, move on to our next munition. We're gonna start the load. Once we turn the jammer on, it's going to be incredibly loud. It may be difficult to hear. I'm going to try to explain through as much as I can of what I'm doing, but it may be hard. <laughs> Go over our specific safety requirements. We're doing a training munition. If it was a live jasm, we all know. Any damage to the munition, munition gets covered. If there's any residue that comes off, any paint, we take it. We'll mark it as, such, as we need to, and I'll go forward with what we need to do. Just make sure no pictures are taken from that point. With our ADP, if the missile actually begins activation, it can become hot, don't touch it. We have to make sure any moving services that we have, keep hands, keep anything clear, it's crushing hazards. There's no other maintenance that's gonna be performed. If anyone else does come in here, make sure they're not doing anything that's gonna interfere with what we're doing. Also, make sure we give them our safety requirements, 300 feet to the ECPs and a BRE back distance from this for fire. I'm gonna remove any stores not locked in, get as far away from the area and fight fire. I remove any non-essential personnel to these people. Evacuation. Call the fire department at triple one three. And tell them to drop for ATM fifty eight. And call mock at forty eight. All right, sounds good. Brings watches jewelry. You guys, good. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's hit it. Crew touch up. Break. So typically when we'd be doing an actual load starting from the beginning, um, we would have them go through all of their preparation that they've already done, which would include his MUNS prep, his look over of the jammer, and his rack prep. At this point, we already have those completed. So uh, he's about to start the jammer, so this is when it's probably gonna get hard to hear. Um, I guess it more or less depends on how close we are to it. I'll try to talk a little bit louder just in case. Make sure that we actually have our good center of gravity and we don't actually tip the jammer over or anything. He's going to extend out the wheels to make sure that we have uh, a proper CG. Once he sends his wheels out, we're going to take the forks, he's going to drive, and he's going to be guided by our three man, who's going to guide him into the casket so he can get them picked up. Once they actually come through, that strap he's holding, we're going to strap it over the missile and onto the forks as an extra precaution to make sure that the missile can slide off at any point. With a lot of this stuff, all this equipment is extremely heavy, so any really big sudden movements, sudden jerks, anything like that, it could potentially cause drop munitions, which is, knock on wood, something that we don't want to happen. So we have multiple safety precautions to make sure that this is
check tilt. side down. This is to ensure that you can see the missile kind of shake a little bit. We're going to be kind of cinching it down to make sure that it stays. Because part of this launcher is that it rotates. So when it rotates, you don't want these munitions to start drooping down. 